What's up guys? Welcome back for part two in my two-part series of top 10 fighting games. We want to see arcade one-up release and their arcade machines. Now, the first five I gave, gave you guys, I think there were some really, really great titles, you know, such as Soul Calibur 3, Tekken Tag Tournament, SNK vs. Capcom SVC Chaos. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, which seems like a lot of people really would love to see that one released because Third Strike, it was just awesome as it was. If you haven't played it, go find it, buy it yourself, whether on a console or if, I don't think they have a PC version. If they do have a PC version, get them, get an arcade stick, get a controller, and just have some good old fashioned brawling. Put down Marvel vs. Capcom 3 as well, so Marvel vs. Capcom was a great series especially if you go into the more current consoles as well as the arcades. But right now we're going to go ahead and start with number five. Number five. So this is a game that has been out for, well, the series has been around for a couple of decades, obviously, about two, three decades. We're going to go ahead and put down Super Street Fighter 4. Now, while yes, it did come out in the arcade as Super Street Fighter 4, a lot of people are more well known for Street Fighter 4 in general. But Super Street Fighter 4 had a couple of extra characters. Generally when they release the Supers, they're going to come out with uh, extra characters like, uh, in this case, Yin and Yang. They brought them back from Street Fighter 3 as well. So, uh, if you haven't checked that game out yet, since it did come out in 2010 by, obviously, Capcom, stick around, take a look at this trailer, and I think you'll want to go back and maybe play that as well as the, new, the newer Street Fighter V. So stay tuned.
So like I said, Street Fighter 4, Super Street Fighter 4 were both very, very awesome games. I actually had a chance to go to the original launch party that Capcom had set up in Los Angeles back in, I think it was 2009, 2010, something like that. And everybody had a chance to check out the game, play the game, and even see some older style versions of Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 3. I guess people had gotten a little artistic when it came to the actual cabinets themselves and made them look a little bit different. So, But it was a party. It was a party. It was a get-together. It was a pretty big crowd. Obviously, it would have been canceled if it were going on today right now, but it was still a lot of fun. Next game, we're going into number four. It's going to be a game that is near and dear to my heart, as well as many other fighting gamers. Soul Calibur 2. Which version of Soul Calibur 2? Well, it's preference when it came to that. Now, why not release an arcade version that has all the special characters? You know, when it came to the three different consoles they had that they were released, you know, you had it where PlayStation 2 ended up having Heihachi Mishima from Tekken. The Xbox version had Spawn in there from McFarlane, from McFarlane Image Comics. And then on the Nintendo GameCube version, you had Link from The Legend of Zelda, Zelda 64, Ocarina of Time, you know, all of those different Legend of Zelda games. I am not normally the biggest Nintendo person these days, but Soul Calibur 2 was a great game on the GameCube. For whatever reason, the com the controller just worked great. And if you had a GameCube WaveBird, that was even more awesome because you were just godly at that point. Myself, I was working at GameStop at the time when the game came out. So had the Japanese version, and a lot of people really enjoyed playing that. So check out this trailer for Soul Calibur 2. I'll try to make it an arcade version, but it may just be one of the consoles. So stay tuned and check out the trailer. Transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords eternally retold.
All right, guys, we are up to the top three games we want to see released by Arcade 1-Up. So, number three is part of the Street Fighter series. Obviously, Street Fighter's been out for a very long time, so they have many, many games that have been on the market. But this was a little more on the animated side when it came to some of the art styles from back in the 90s. You know, tallying from 1998, we are putting on the list... Street Fighter Alpha 3. So, the thing that I liked about Street Fighter Alpha 3 was the art style was really good, but it still had many, if not all, of the similar sound effects of Street Fighter 2, Super Street Fighter 2, Hyper, Turbo, whatever you actually wanted to call any of the 20 variations they had of Street Fighter 2. But Street Fighter Alpha 3 was in the arcades, and I got to play that a number of times in the arcade, and Almost any time I went to the arcade, there were so many people crowded around the, this particular arcade machine that you'd have to wait about a good 20, 30 minutes just to even get into play. And that's even with just, you know, two or three round match. You know, it's just crazy at how people really flocked to this particular game. So that's why this game is coming in at my number three, for Street Fighter Alpha 3. So take a look at this trailer, maybe in a little bit of gameplay, and enjoy. All right, number two. We have come a long way just in a short amount of time. So number two is part two out of a couple of different games. So we are going to go ahead and venture back into the Tekken series. So Tekken obviously has been huge for people in the past. I know myself. I'm an Eddie Gordo person. I'm sorry. I had a couple friends back in California that hated me for it. But I got to actually use him pretty well. So him and also Christy, which was just essentially a female version of Eddie in terms of the move set and move styles. So we are going to add probably the more current game onto the list, or the most current game onto this list, and that's going to be Tekken Tag Tournament Part 2. So if you ever went to an arcade and saw Tekken Tag Tournament Part 2 being played, it was a pretty gigantic arcade machine. So one of the things about that is that the screen, I don't know how big it was, it, it almost seemed like it was about four feet wide. And you're sitting back, you're standing back at about four feet. And you have this gigantic controller standing in front of you where you can play those two players. But it was almost like going to the movies just with an arcade machine in mind. If you never saw it and just went into an arcade and it was there, you'd be like, holy crap. I know I went to a couple arcades and there was just so many people crowded around that. Probably even more crowded around that particular game than with any of the Street Fighter games I had played up until that point. So that's why Tekken Tag Tournament Part 2 is coming in at my number two spot. So take a look at this and we'll be back for number one.
For those of you that have not seen Tekken Tag Tournament Part 2, I really hope you enjoyed that trailer. I think they actually called it Tekken Tag Tournament 2 Unlimited when it came out in the arcades. So, hopefully you enjoyed that and are happy to be sticking around for number one. Number one came out in 2000. Now, I've been to many different forums. I have been to many different YouTube channels. And a majority of them are requesting the exact same game. What is that? Well, Marvel vs. Capcom Part 2. Now, it came out 20 years ago, and you still have people that really love that game. They love the gameplay. They love the, the play style. So, the animations were fluid. The gameplay was solid, first off. And if you actually played it in an actual arcade machine, then you were a very lucky person. Capcom Presents. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 New Age of Heroes For me, Wolverine Definitely one of the best characters in that particular game. But everybody has their own tag groups that they were used to actually utilizing. Uh, for me, it's been a very long, time, very long time since I've actually played the game. But I do remember playing it with my friends pretty consistently. Maybe not necessarily in the arcades, but on the consoles. You know, the version that came out on Dreamcast was... Probably one of the better ones next to, I believe, the PlayStation 2 version that came out as well. So if you never had a chance to play those, you are missing out. Granted, there are countless games that you can be missing out on that have come out within the past 40 years. Since the old days of the Atari and ColecoVision and, and television. But this is a game that you've got to go play. If you haven't played it, you really need to go play Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now, I ended up talking about a lot of games on this list that are must-plays. But Arcade 1-Up, you've already released the information of Marvel vs. Capcom Part 1 having its own arcade machine. Why not do a Marvel vs. Capcom 2? Maybe not this year. Maybe next year. Next year is another year. You can do Marvel vs. Capcom 2. You can do Street Fighter Alpha 3. And you can even do a Street Fighter 3 Third Strike on the same cabinet or give them their own individual cabinets and release some of these ones that I actually talked about. I think that you could sell tens of thousands of these arcade cabinets, if, you know, thousands, maybe tens of thousands, if you get the right games out there. Marvel vs. Capcom Part 1 was a great game. I'm not going to deny that. But Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was so much better. In terms of the gameplay, the style, the art, just everything. And for the love of God, Arcade 1UP, release it with upgraded joysticks and buttons. While it's nice to have them, upgrade them. People are upgrading the things from the machine, the, all these things from the machines as you're releasing them anyway. Because some of them are semi-subpar. Or they're just a little too clicky, or they don't have all the right directions. You know, when it comes to the arcade one-up joystick, sometimes it's the, the four-direction controller as opposed to the, the four-direction, or as opposed to the eight-direction joystick that a lot of people really want for specific games. Put that stuff in there. Don't make it where people need to go and dissect their arcade machine within the first few weeks to upgrade your arcade stick where they need to put actual arcade buttons in there that are better quality. If you guys do that, you are going to get a much larger following. I know you guys have gotten better over the years, but I think if you do these few things, people are going to come to you in droves. 
because then they will want to throw their money at you. Instead of 400 bucks, charge $500 if that's going to be the case. If you That means you're going to put some better quality parts in there. Just do that, though. And that's my little soapbox rant for you guys. Hopefully, many of you are going to agree with the same thing that I am. All right, now I know that I said it was only going to be a top 10 list. We are going to have one honorable mention. And that's a game that really wasn't released in... The arcades, however, was released on the Nintendo Wii back in 2008. That is going to be Tatsunoku vs. Capcom, which the Wii version, it was called Cross Generation of Heroes. And it was apparently an okay fighter. You know, I, I think if it had actually had an arcade release, it might have had it where it did a little more justice. Now, what you're looking at, you are looking at a game that fitted the Tatsunoku characters versus Capcom characters. So, for instance, some of the Tatsunoku fighters are not quite as well-known in America. Uh, you got Tekaman, Yatterman, uh, Gold Lightan, uh, Ipatsuman, and Jun the Swan, versus, you know, you got Mega Man, Morgan, Ryo, Zero, Beautiful Joe. So there, there's a number of Capcom characters that are in there that people are going to recognize. However, there's many of these Tatsunoku characters that many people really aren't going to recognize. So I think if, you know, characters like, say, what's his name, Gotcha Man, were actually released in an arcade setting here, then I think people will understand the gameplay a little bit better. Now, if they put this one as an extra fighting game on some of these other cabinets, like, say, if they did the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 one, and then put... Tatsunoku versus Capcom on there. I think it could be another solid fighter for people to experience that may not have had a Nintendo Wii or they really didn't feel that the Nintendo Wii was able to have such a fighting game. Well, yes, the, the gameplay style might be a little bit different for some people. It's something that I think everybody should experience, including myself and including you.
But I hope you guys did like the video. I hope you guys like and subscribe, maybe even share it with some of your friends. And until the next video, guys, I bid you adieu, and game on.